Hey YouTube, it's been a pretty long time since I made one of these. JMJ Wilson sent me a list similar to this while I was looking for something to play. I swapped the muzzle he was running for Sci Hill and climbed up to GM with it for 4100. This was a game I played during the climb against the Knife Nick Scorch deck. Looking at my hand here, it's uh, pretty bronze. I want to kick the Skirmisher so I don't end up breaking a Barclay. It's a consideration to kick the Recon just for Blacklist value before kicking the second Skirmisher, but the Blacklist is fairly minimal and having the Recon to dig for BMEs round 1 feels a little bit better. I kick the last dwarf and end up with a hand that is uh, just as uh, bronze as it started. A few options here. I could spy, but that doesn't really get me anywhere. If my opponent wants to get out of the round, he can just pass on the spy to get out. I'm generally not too threatened by Eithne's tempo, so I'd rather wait and see exactly what variant they are before committing my spy. After we commit it to not playing spy, BME is the only play that really makes any sense. Merc into Merc into Archer is a pretty strong tell he's a Scorch deck. All of a sudden, our Yaven is looking to be way more exciting in round 2 or 3 than it would in round 1. He'll never be able to surprise or overtake me in round 1 on this deck, so I can just keep developing my graveyard. I have two main options here. Try and force my opponent out of the round with bigger tempo plays, then use Yave in round 2 to either 2 LM or get card advantage. The other option is to develop my graveyard and get out of the round quickly. Going into a really long round 3 against a Scorch deck is always a bit of a headache, and given that I have plenty of mediocre bronze cards I wouldn't mind getting out of my hand this round, I choose option 1. We both pulled our Ailerons, and I just continue playing mediocre cards out. Shortening round 3 is probably favorable for me, and if I end up trading bronzes for anything bigger than a bronze, I'm pretty happy. Speaking of things bigger than bronzes, he commits a gold. To not even trap me in the round. I still have access to double marching orders for Barclay to make a big tempo swing if I need to find a pass, but just continue playing bad cards in response to his big gold play. Playing marching orders or recon here could give my opponent an 18 point scorch or rather not let him have. I'm probably safe to play a half off hunter here, but opt to keep both proactive plays in my hand and get out. He couldn't do 16 last turn, either he missed something or can't do 16 this turn either. But really though, it's probably pretty irrelevant. Playing half off here doesn't make his scorches any better in round 3, and you'd probably just be trading a bronze for a bronze. If I were able to get another skirmisher out without sheer overtaking, that would be worth doing, but the half off play doesn't seem like it really accomplishes anything. Oh look, more bronzes. Kick a dwarf for the other dwarf, and we're left with this abomination of a hand. If he doesn't draw pass, we have marching orders into agitator, and we can spy him to force him out of the round and probably win up a card with Ithne marching orders for Barclay. He ends up dry passing, and we just take with the worst points card in our hand, which was probably a mistake. Skirmisher is one point more in round 3, but I'm playing so many copies of Skirmisher through Agitators and Hattori that I don't really want to risk getting Scorched on my 9s. Trading one point for a ton of Scorch safety seems way better looking back. Oh sweet, a decoy. Let me just kick this dwarf and draw... oh. Okay. So really this isn't that bad. It means instead of my Eithne needing to use Marching Orders to pull Barclay from my deck, the first one will pull it allowing Eithne to use Decoy instead, which is typically better. Not quite gold card good, but better than drawing a recon for sure. We lead on our spy to avoid Scorch. Remember how I said a second ago at least we didn't draw a recon? Yeah, so we're on zero golds, whatever, at least we're not overthinning. He's gonna have to play awkwardly to get a Scorch, and we blocked in last say. I'm not sure if I can say I feel ahead here, but I don't feel terrible about this position. Okay, so he has 7 points for our card, and I've got last say. I feel pretty good about that. Scorches are back online, but at this point I thought I could play around them reasonably well. We'll see where that line of thought goes wrong in a moment. Leading on the Skirmisher instead of half up, they're in the 12 point Scorch. I'm feeling pretty good about his Scorches being bad. Let's fast forward a bit to when some more interesting decisions have to be made. Playing around this Malayne is generally pretty free, but I almost never remember to. Anyway, I want to play the big Skirmisher off the Barclay before decoying my Agitator to field another 9. Looking at my hand, it has between 3 and 5 9s in it, depending on how Eithne and Decoy targets work out. Oops. I can't Decoy my Barclay without breaking a Recon, because I drew too many Bronzes, so Decoy is either on Hattori for Half Elf, or Agitator for Skirmisher. I have to commit one of these before using the second Recon, and thinning the Skirmishers out of my deck. He plays his first Scorch pretty early. Now I have some options here. I could sacrifice 4 points per Skirmisher to play around Shiru Scorch by hitting 2s and playing them as 6s instead of 9s. I think this line is actually significantly better than the one that I took. Even if he guns Shear on the second Skirmisher here like I want him to, this costs me 9 extra points immediately just because the second unit got Scorched. And if he doesn't play the Shear immediately, I can't risk playing a third 9 point Skirmisher, and the remaining Skirms have to hit 2s anyway, costing me at least 6 additional points if he holds the Shear until the end. Thankfully he ends up taking it immediately, and we're back in business. He's played all of his golds, so there's no worry about Bork. And even if there was, we couldn't do anything about it. 
so we just take a pretty simple line to maximize the number of points we're playing and hope that it's enough. Speaking of that simple line, Rising Agitator is an additional point of a Rising the Half-Elf, and I'm not actually sure how I missed this in-game. Somehow the suboptimal Half-Elf ends up being worth more points than the Agitator, as he wastes 3 Elzer Thunder points. I'm guessing he took my misplay as a signal that I was trying to get a Shiru. I can't really count on players making the read, and it's pretty hard to capitalize on that read being beneficial to you, but it's cool to see how this unintentionally worked out. Here I'm doing the math over what would happen if his last silver was Mandrake, which is pretty silly since he's played 6 silvers, Gwentup just isn't showing the Yaven that he played in round 1 over on his side of the tracker. Anyway, the non-existent Mandrake would have tied the game, and deciding I'd be fine with the tie, I got the max value Agitator, rather than killing his unit. His last card ends up being just an 11 point Sage, and we take it with our last bronze, and hit GM for the season. Turns out, you don't need gold to speed Ithna Control. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to like the video, and leave a comment below. Until next time.